On today's story session, a tale about an old-timey toxic boyfriend and his super spacey lady. This is Hans's Tree. My name is Zach Stewart, and these are the Shadow Bear Story Sessions. Welcome to the Shadow Bear Story Sessions, the podcast about how brutally dark and totally insane folk tales and fairy tales used to be. In my opinion, this just made them way better and more entertaining, so I've got the most true-to-the-original version of Grimm's fairy tales that I could find, and we're going through it front to back, story by story. We'll figure out the unintended lessons of each story, and at the end of each episode, I'll adapt the tale into a movie or TV show. Let's get right to it with today's tale, titled Hans's Trina. Because apparently every guy back then was named Hans, and this particular Hans had a girlfriend named Trina. We begin. Hans's Trina was lazy and didn't want to do any work. They're making it very clear how we should feel about Trina right up top. She said to herself, what should I do? Should I eat, sleep, or work? Ah, uh, I think I'll eat first. Well, that's not lazy. Everyone eats before they work. After she had stuffed herself fully, she said to herself again, What should I do, work or sleep? Ah, I think I'll sleep a little first. Okay, now we're going in the wrong direction. Then she lay down and slept, and when she woke up, it was night, so she could no longer go out and work. So she slept all night, ate a bit, and then slept all day. Sounds like depression. Sounds like she needs help. One time, Hans returned home at noon and found Trina sleeping again in their room. So he took his knife uh, and cut off her dress at the knees. It's pretty fucked up behavior from Hans here. I mean, I get that he might be frustrated that Trina isn't working, but it's an awful reaction. This would be unacceptable behavior in any type of relationship, regardless of of what Trina's doing here. His frustrations are justified, but his actions... Not so much. We continue. Trina awoke and thought, It's time now to go to work. However, when she went outside to work and saw that the dress was so short, she became frightened and wondered whether she really was Trina and said to herself, Am I or am I not Trina? She didn't know how to answer this question and stood there a while in doubt. Finally, she thought, you should go home and ask if you are you. They'll know for sure. So she returned home, knocked at the window, and called inside. Is Hans's Trina inside? Aw. It makes me really sad that she identified herself as Hans's Trina, instead of just Trina. You are not just your boyfriend's girlfriend, Trina. You are Trina. Be a proud Trina, Trina. Continuing, since the others thought she was in her usual place, they answered, yes, she's lying down in her room and sleeping. Well, then I'm not me, Trina said in delight. So she went off to the village and never returned. And this is how Hans got rid of his Trina. Okay, this story is insane, and I love it. But now I'm just concerned for Trina, because first we thought she was just lazy. But maybe she just needs some motivation and a talk on time management? So we don't know if Hans or anyone have really talked to her about that. But then after her reaction to seeing that her dress is short, I can only assume there's something else going on here. She might not be quite right in the head, is what I'm thinking. I mean, yeah, she wakes up in her own bed, in her own house, wearing her own clothes... And everything's fine. She seems fully confident in her identity and who she is. But then seeing that her dress is cut off at the knee makes her immediately question her entire sense of self. I don't see the leap there. Presumably she recognizes the dress she's wearing, but the fact that it's shorter than she remembers is the only thing that seems different than she remembers. And that tiny fact is enough to make her doubt her entire reality. 
her whole identity. She immediately jumps to this conclusion without considering any alternative explanations. This is a leap. So this woman, there's something going on. She's not fully well. Or maybe she's just going through a difficult time. She sounds depressed and very emotionally and psychologically fragile. Maybe she just needs some support right now. And here we've got Hans cutting up her clothes. Interestingly, I did notice... When her family or whoever is inside, says Trina's in her room sleeping, Trina says, well, then I'm not me, quote, in delight. It specifies this emotion. So she's happy that she's not Trina. This is good news to her. Maybe in her mind, all the baggage of being Trina was weighing her down, and she's happy that she doesn't have to deal with that shit anymore. I mean, Hans seems... Like a total asshole, he makes one brief appearance in this story, and in that appearance, he behaves like a psycho cutting Trina's dress. It's terrible. That's not helpful or motivating in any way. Maybe talk to Trina. Hans, did you ever try that? I still don't like that even Trina herself refers to herself as Hans' as Trina. It just makes me real sad for some reason. And then these other people who live in their home didn't even notice... Trina got up and left. And they don't even recognize her voice when she asks from outside. Don't even recognize her voice. So these people are barely paying attention to her and clearly don't care about her that much. So you know what? Fuck these people, Trina. Go be free. Free Trina. Hashtag free Trina. Maybe Trina just needs some independence. Admittedly, I'm now worried that there's this psychologically fragile, possibly unwell woman wandering into the village with a cut-up dress and no money or anything. That makes me worry a little bit for Trina. But still, she seems unburdened here. So I'm going to choose to be on Trina's side here. Trina just seems either kind of simple and not super sharp, or just going through a hard time, or possibly in need of some mental health treatment or something. I mean, the fact that she's sleeping all day and a night, means something is going on. Depression, something. But Hans is just an asshole. He doesn't wake her up and be like, hey, do you think you could help me with something? Or, you know, now would be a great time to do some work since since it's light outside, you know? And you don't want to accidentally sleep through the day again. Because the way they frame it, at first, makes it seem like she intended to work. It just got too late, because she slept. So maybe she just needs help with time management. Or depression or something. This story wants us to side with Hans, but I'm Team Trina all the way. Just get this woman the help she needs and be nice to her. My goodness, Hans. You dick. So I don't know what the intended lesson here is supposed to be, but it seems that we're sort of rooting for Hans here. That's sort of how they're framing it. So it seems like the intended lesson is that if your partner or friend is lazy and not working hard enough, don't talk to them or try to address the actual problem. Just gaslight them until they go insane and literally lose their entire sense of self and leave. The story is like an advertisement for psychological torture as a way of getting out of a relationship instead of actually having an honest conversation about it and about what's going on and what's bothering you. Because the story frames this as a victory for Hans. Not great. Problematic guys. Problematic. So the actual lesson that I'm going to choose to take from this story is to use it as a cautionary tale to show the importance of communication and possibly mental health issues. Trina's sleeping all day and clearly has a very fragile mind at the moment. I mean, she loses her entire belief in her identity because her dress is shorter than she thought it was. This woman's mind is teetering on the edge. And Hans and these other people in the house should help her instead of cutting up her clothes as she sleeps. It is not helpful, Hans. So that's the real lesson here. If someone is having a hard time, just be honest about it with them and try to get them the help that they need. If she flat out refused to work, then talk to her. And if need be, say, if you refuse to work, then I don't think we'll be able to support ourselves. So we should really work on whatever we need so you can get up and out and be productive because you'll probably be happier if you're being productive anyway. They don't do this. Nope. Cut up the clothes. And she also does go outside to work right before she realizes that her dress is short. And then has the identity crisis. So she intended to work. She's not just totally lazy. Time management is her issue. Possibly depression too. So fuck you, Hans. 
Coming up her dress? What an asshole. Hashtag free Trina. So let's adapt this. This is going to be a movie, and it takes place modern day. We have a woman who finds herself trapped in a relationship with a very controlling man. And the woman will be played by Kate McKinnon, SNL, and the man will be played by Zubek Bennett, also from SNL. Very funny. And the man is an asshole, just like Hans, who, let's say he works for a hedge fund and is basically just a corporate bro. Super douchey, pretty rude, basically just a, a blustery buffoon. And Kate McKinnon met him when they were in college, and he was sweet and kind of funny, but he's just become insufferably douchey and vain, and since he's worked for this hedge fund, he only cares about money. And Kate is an artist and a designer, and they have a funny sort of bickering and bantering back and forth, but Kate's getting sick of it. And as a painter, say Kate has been painting mostly portraits and is very good at it, and her work sells, but she's been doing the same sort of thing for a long time, so she feels kind of boxed in. And anytime she tries to do anything different, people just want more portraits from her and, and think she should focus on that. Except for one friend, one guy at her studio, is played by Oscar Isaac. He's cool and artsy, and he encourages her to do whatever she wants and just follow her, her artistic vision. But everyone else is just like, no, the portraits, they're selling. Keep doing the portraits. Wait, don't, don't mess with a good thing. And then one day, she wakes up and realizes that she looks just completely different. She just doesn't even look like herself anymore. In fact, she looks very similar to a portrait that she painted of the woman that she totally made up. And she wakes up one day to see that she actually looks exactly like this fictional woman that she created. And now, from here on out in the movie, she'll be played by Jamila Jamil. It's the woman from the portrait. And initially, she's super freaked out and thinks that it's just in her head. Maybe it's in her head. So she goes to her art studio Beck Bennett is at work right now when she wakes up. So she goes to her art studio and talks to her friends that she works with there. They've got like a workshop and a studio and display space and all that. And they clearly don't recognize her and are very confused. And they just think that this is some, some random woman. So she panics for a bit. And that night she goes back home and Beck Bennett is there. And she doesn't know how to explain what's going on. But he's being super weird and sleazy and hitting on her. So she's like, he's going to hit on this other woman when... Meanwhile, for all he knows, I'm missing. Fuck this guy. She just she just leaves. Fucks right out of there. Take a hike, Beck Bennett. So now she's got nowhere to stay, so she goes back to the art studio. And let's say Oscar Isaac lives above the studio. And she tells him that she's an artist herself and asks if she can stay there for a bit and maybe sleep on the couch and use the space. And Oscar Isaac normally wouldn't, but since she already knows him so well, she knows exactly what to say and what to do to get on his good side. And he can't quite place it, but he feels connected to her somehow. He feels like he knows her. He feels like he can trust her. So he lets her stay there and use the studio. If she, if she helps out with maintenance of the place, basically. She'll just be like, oh, I'm new in the country, and you know, I just need a place to stay. And basically, she realizes that now that she's this new person, she can do whatever she wants to do. She can paint whatever she wants to paint. She can be whoever she wants to be. She can decide who she wants to be. So she starts painting these dramatic avant-garde pieces, and the other people in the studio love it. She becomes an instant hit, starts doing super well as an artist, and Oscar Isaac sees her work, and he's the only one that sees a similarity in her, in her work, in her style. And he also notices little things that she does, and minor little inflections, and her nervous tics, and all the little nuances. And nobody knows what happened to Kate McKinnon, so he's worried about her, but he can't help noticing all these similarities between Kate and this new artist. Jamila Jamil. So finally he confronts her about it, and she realizes that he was the only one that really knew her and cared for her on a deep level on the inside and on the level of who she really is, not just all the superficial stuff, not just what she looks like, not just, you know, the things she things she made before. And of course they get together in dramatic fashion after her big art show, and we all learn a lesson that we can be who we decide to be. And the people who truly love us for who we are will love us all the same. The end. So there we go. That'll do it for this week's story session. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Come on back next week for a story titled The Sparrow and His Four Children. Got a dad sparrow and a bunch of little baby sparrows. 
Let's see what they get up to. So come on back next week for some Sparrow Adventures. My name is Zach Stewart, and these are the Shadow Bear Story Sessions.